Okay. <clears throat> I actually made a little clip uh, a couple hours ago of me doing my blood sugar. This is a clip of me putting my medications in my medication containers here. I did a review. I think I did review twice, actually, of the thing that uh, there's 31 of these that go in a, a rack. And I did a review back several years ago about how nice it was. But putting all the medicines in a thing for a month is a pain in the butt. So I've started just doing a week at a time or whatever. So, take one capsule by mouth twice a day. If I drop one of these, I don't, even though, if I, even if I drop it on the desk, I, uh, I toss it. Sometimes one will bounce out and fall on the floor, of course, and I toss that. I worked like at a hospital where more than once I saw, you know, in the little, in the break room for the nurses and the other staff right there, a nurse, I remember she dropped something on the floor. The, you know, the ER floor where I, she picked it up off the floor and ate it. Uh, I'm not sure why. I, uh, I'm very finicky or whatever. Very careful when I eat about, you know, if I use a fork or whatever, if I'm scrambling eggs or whatever, I make sure that uh, no cross-contamination. Very, I'm very careful on stuff like that. Uh, this is my uh, diabetes medication. Take one tablet. Uh, with breakfast and with dinner. Now I have to kind of watch on this because sometimes I don't end up not taking. So I don't want to double them up, although it wouldn't kill me. Okay, there's already one in there that I didn't take. Okay, there... There, there's one in there I didn't take, so I don't need that one. Okay, I need one in there, need one in there. Okay, there's one in there I didn't take. Sometimes I just don't feel like swallowing the... It's not that I t tested my blood sugar or something and thought I didn't need it. Not like my ex-wife, uh, she has type 2 diabetes also, and she will, uh, if she eats some sweets or something, she'll just not take her blood, you know, not test it. She'll just take extra medication, you know, take what she's supposed to take and take another one. I don't do it that way. Okay. Baby aspirin, one before. I, uh... I take one at night. You have, usually your heart doctor or your even regular doctor recommends you take a baby aspirin. Uh, I heard somebody finally said that probably a good idea to take it at night because, which is kind of surprising, uh, Statistically, most of the heart attacks happen like in the morning when you wake up or something, something like that. I don't know where, how, you know, it's, that's what I heard. So that would be a good idea to you take it at night instead of, because I used to just take them in the morning for some reason. So I started taking it at night. 
And this is naproxen, which is for pain. I have a lot of arthritis pain. In fact, I just took a naproxen. But I don't put those in my uh, container. My, it may be the weather, but my arthritis is really hurting bad today. And it seems it's getting worse. So medicines like this, like Tylenol, I don't know if this is in the same category. As, but they're very bad on your liver, and you don't want to take them. But I think I'm at the point where I probably... Uh, probably need to uh, be taking them L, you know, every day. This is potassium. And when you take the water pill, you should take the potassium. And I very rarely take one of these. Very rarely do I take a potassium. In fact, there's a couple in there that I haven't, well, quite a few actually, that uh, I haven't. I didn't take them before when I was going through the things. I just don't take them. When I get my blood tested or whatever, my potassium level's okay. But you need potassium for communications with the heart or whatever. And if you if you don't have the potassium you need in your system, you, know, you can be. So this is for the heart. Take one tap of my mouth twice daily. heart and blood pressure. I have a pacemaker in me, by the way. I had put in quite a few years ago. I have not had any, I didn't have any, had no trouble at all. I've made some videos. In fact, you're probably going to see, because I'm, I'm making little clips here. And then I'm going to splice all these together. And I think it's tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow I'm supposed to send the data uh, over the phone line to, oh, wait a minute. Okay. Did I just put this in there? Did you, you were you all watching me? Um, what was I saying? Okay, here are the water pills. I finally just started. This is something, too, I didn't take. Uh, but it, they work. Uh, big, I have an enlarged prostate. And uh, these do work. And I was sort of off and on. It used to be, too. It said on, it used to have, my doctor used to have it say on here, you know, take as needed. Now it's take one tablet by mouth daily for swelling. My uh, So I just got to the point where... And it used to be two, take one or two, you know. Now the doctor says, has on this, take one daily. So I'll take that in the morning. They do work. And if I take two, that works really well. You know, not only do I have, you know, I cannot, I shouldn't be doing this, talking to you. <laughs> I can't do two things. I've never been able to do two things at once. Uh, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Like, I can't watch TV or even listen to music and do email or do anything. You know, I'm a one... I don't know. Uh-oh. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay, no, never mind. Yeah, my doctor, uh, heart medication, uh, whatever. And we reduced the medicine from uh, 
20 to 10. So I was cutting the, so there's some ones that I'd cut in half, but I actually have the ones prescribed at the correct, take one tablet by mouth twice daily. Okay, I, I'm lied to you. I, I dropped that on the desk. I'm going to go ahead and drop it in there. But usually if in the kitchen, if uh, a piece of bread or something touches the stove or you know, I toss it. I make baked potatoes a lot. I stick Before I bake them, I stick the fork in it, you know, all the way around. Well, I rinse the fork off. And uh, maybe you can use a different fork when it gets ready to eat them, you know. Oh, oh man. I'm getting down here low. Well, this is it here. And I forget what this is for. Take one tablet by mouth every day um, I think this one's for the prostate also the one back here is Tylenol which I was prescribed or I forget uh, Tylenol is really really bad on your uh, on your liver and I guess a lot of people have Tylenol and if you're suffering from depression or you want to teach your girlfriend a lesson by injuring yourself or something, I don't know how many times. Uh, I used to work security at a hospital and uh, for over 30 years. I don't know how many times that uh, people would take an overdose of Tylenol and... They'd come in, and an awful lot of the time, well, the reason security was there, the reason I was there is because they were going to put a tube down there into their stomach and put charcoal down in there or do whatever, and you'd have these people saying, no, you, I'm not going to, you know, not going to do it. And if you, attempt, if you were attempting suicide, you didn't have any choice. Uh, you'd be put into uh, leather restraints and the tube would go down. Now sometimes they'd give you an option of, you know, hey, do you want to drink this or do you want to do this or that? And uh, Some of the people would uh, agree to it. Some would say that, some would agree to it and say they would do it and then they would stall as long as they could. And then uh, they'd go into leather restraints. And, uh, but I don't know how many times somebody would take an overdose of Tylenol. And I remember, well, I'll just give you one example. A guy came in, <sighs> young guy, upset with his girlfriend about something, going to teach her a lesson. And, uh, he took a, he took Tylenol, a bottle of Tylenol or something, I don't know how much. And uh, in my opinion, he was a scumbag. I won't list you the reasons why I thought this guy was a scumbag because a lot of you may be sitting out there with tattoos and shit all over you. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, that's not the only reason though, so. But anyway, uh, in my opinion, he's a scumbag and stupid. And then his girlfriend shows up. Beautiful. Smart, I, at least, you know, as far as, you know, smart, beautiful. And she shows up. And uh, he, of course, appears to be fine. They've drawn the blood on him or whatever. I don't remember having to put him in restraints. 
can't remember. But uh, she shows up, and uh, I think his family might have showed up too. Well, there's a bunch of these. They're all mixed together. But what happened is off, you know, family would show up. Well, in this case, let's simply stick with this one. Girlfriend shows up. Now, there was other family members there, I think, or maybe some of her girlfriends. And he's talking, and they'd broken up or something. But she, then he let her know he'd taken an overdose. And so she comes to the hospital. And uh, she's so happy to see that he's alert and all that type of, you know, all that type of stuff. And that he's okay. She says that she's going to, oh, I'll stay with you, honey, and oh, I'll, I'll watch you tonight and make sure you're okay or whatever. And then the uh, lab results comes, comes back on him. And the numbers, whatever, to show in the lab results that uh, he's taken enough that uh, his liver has been destroyed. And uh, he's looking at death or being on dialysis or, I mean, he's screwed up. And I've seen a ton of uh, situations like that where uh, family will show up, you know, young young guy or seems like the ones, maybe that's the ones that just stick in my mind. Some guy, you know, the girlfriend's not going to go out with him or breaking up with him for some reason or whatever and it it's like you usually think of you think of guys doing suicide in some other way uh, I think myself I've probably suffered from depression maybe all my life and uh, you know didn't know it maybe I still don't know it uh, but uh, but I just functioned, and I just, I just functioned, and I uh, did my job. Worked never, you know, never was without a job. I usually had two jobs and every, you know. But now I wouldn't be manic depressive because I don't have those, those range or you know, ranges or uh, whatever. But. Anyway, uh, lab results would come back. You know, these people, family would be all happy. They come in and they think their son is, uh, yeah, I tell you. If, you know, if you're having any kind of problems of depression or thinking of suicide or anything else, get in contact with somebody. And... Let me tell you, as a hospital security officer for 30 years, if, you know, you may say, I'm an, I've had him say it, you know, I'm an American, I've got my rights, you can't, no, nope. if you attempt suicide and you end up in the hospital, uh, the hospital is going to do what they think is necessary. You can say, I'm not, I don't want the charcoal. I don't want the IV. I don't want this. I don't want that. No, you are, you're being treated. And I've had them, people say, you know, I'm going to sue. I'll sue you or whatever. Nah, nobody ever sued. Nobody ever won. Uh, so that's, that's not good. I mean, you know, by the way, I have a very big fear of uh, choking or aspirating or what. I, I couldn't. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want a tube put down my my throat, uh, a breathing tube or anything else. Uh, so I know, and it is not uh, not pleasant. Um, so if you, you know, if you have any problems of depression or anything like that, please see 
you know, call the crisis lines or talk to family, uh, you know, do something and please don't injure yourself. And I worked at a, another hospital. We had a, a blind rehab program. And a lot of those people were people who had diabetes and lost their eyesight because of diabetes. And then there were also, at, back at that time in the like 1970s, there were a lot of, uh, apparently, people that had a disability. See, that was just a blind rehab program, I believe, yeah. Uh, a lot of people, and then, were kind of kept at home, I think. It's my understanding. You know, and then, young people, and then they're, Parents were not able to care for them anymore or help them out. And I think now people get out more. And, too, you have, uh, you know, the computers can, you can be blind and the computer can, you can buy voice command, all kinds of, of things. Of, but anyway, they they uh, ended up in the blind rehab program because they were, they kept at home, didn't get out very often. And so they went into the blind, this blind rehab program to, I guess teach them Braille, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, there was a young boy, young man. Uh, he attempted suicide by using a gun. And I guess he must have done something. He just blew the front of his face off. And he came out at night when the group did something. And he didn't come out during the daytime. And uh, whatever problems he had before, he had a whole, you know, he had a whole new, you know, whole new, whole new problems or whatever. Uh, so. Life's not easy for, you know, for a lot of people. I've made it, uh, I'll be 78 years old in March. I never thought, I'm, for some reason, I've mentioned this before. I never did, I never did the math. I, when I was a young person and uh, going to Catholic grade schools and high school, when they had the thing about uh, Our Lady of, was it Our Lady of Fatima? Where she, the, uh, one of the three kids gave the secrets or whatever that would be, and then there was one that was going to be at a future date. And I thought, you know, the nuns in grade school would say, oh, they tell that story, and then they would, and there's a secret that, uh, you know, has been written down and sealed and the Pope has it and it will be released in such and such a date. I never did the math. And I just thought, well, I won't be around. Uh, but, of course, I would. Well, I totally forgot about it. And I totally forgot about it till a few years ago when, uh, who was it, John the 23rd? Was he the one that was at the... Uh, guy attempted to kill him and then it came out that oh uh, the secret of Fatima which was a whole bunch of years before should have been released was never released the Pope looked at it, and the story was that he fainted or he cried or something or other. I mean that's uh, but then the story was uh, that uh, when the Pope that was shot, was it John the 23rd? Uh, felt that that was the, because apparently he had looked at it, well, yeah, looked at it and then uh, put it away and didn't tell anybody. So then when the attempt was made and he survived, then he attributed it, because then they, the news media said, oh, well, okay, now 
he's released because of this attack on him that he went to Fatima. I think it was Fatima. Maybe it was Lords. I think it was Fatima. And he took the bullet, you know. And I don't know whether he just put the bullet there or whether it was mounted on a plaque or whatever. But he put the bullet there and he thanked, you know, Our Lady of the Fatima for sparing his life or whatever. And then the, then they said, well, the secret was, uh, and I forget what it I guess we could do a search. <laughs> it was something that's one of like, you know, a great event will happen, a very important person, and uh, that will rock the world. And it, it was, it could have been a, uh, could have been anything, and uh, so how did I get on this subject? I do not know. Oh, but anyway, uh, something to do with uh, I guess I could back this up and f find my train of thought. Oh, I need to take, what day is today? Today is the 17th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven morning pills. I'm going to go ahead and take the potassium. Well, I'm not going to take the potassium. I don't have anything to drink. Hang on a second. Don't touch that mouse. By the way, did you notice that, how they just all went down? Uh, I forget, what uh, I was somebody who could not swallow pills. And we're talking about, I was an adult. I would go to the doctor, and the doctor would, I hardly, hardly ever went to the doctor. I hardly ever had any medical problem. But I'd go to the doctor, and the doctor would, write out a prescription, I'd say, Good. Is, can I get that in liquid form? <laughs> and, or I'd take my, you know, prescription to the pharmacist, and the pharmacist would say, you know, he'd be looking at the amount, you know, the, is this for a child, or is this for you? It's, why is it in liquid, you know, liquid form? And I could not swallow, I could not swallow a pill. Could not, and I remember when I was, like, in kindergarten, uh, my mother trying to get me to take a pill. Oh, this is going to be this is going to be one of those calls. This message is solely intended for. Antonio Hepburn. If you are not Antonio Hepburn, you must hang up as this message contains private and personal. I tell you, I don't understand why they um, can't. That's probably a bill collector or something. Or 
somebody, I had a whole bunch of calls in the very beginning that somebody had applied for a loan. And uh, so I was getting automated calls on my, of uh, one after, you know, oh, you have been approved, for, you know, call this number or whatever. And two, now maybe this one, I don't know, but these companies call out with like robotic things. Your phone rings, you pick it up, and there's a delay because they've it's calling out to a bunch of numbers, and then there, there's somebody sitting there, and then uh, I don't own a car. I haven't owned a car in years, and I get calls. Uh, your your warranty has expired or, or the whatever, and they get get a whole bunch of not a whole bunch but I get calls and it should be against the law for two these robot calls come in and it's a different it's a different number each time they call and if you call that number back it doesn't go back you know this machine generates a number that you can't you can't report them you know because it's a fake number if you call the number back, you don't get them. Uh, I don't understand. You know, we have a war on drugs with every police officer in the nation, and you know the D special department, the DEA, uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, everything. Why can't we take ten percent of these people, go out and take these people, you know, take them offline? Anyway. I could not swallow a, well, anyway, I was five years old, I can remember my mother pushing a pill in my mouth, holding her hand over my mouth. That didn't work. The landlady who was uh, a uh, Mrs. Hannah, a real nice lady, we lived there one year. Uh, she came, She was heavy set lady, a seamstress. So she came up and she was sitting on me man holding me down and my mother was holding me down and I still wouldn't wouldn't could not take the pill or whatever and I over the years I knew you know hey it's a pain in the butt not to be able to swallow a pill now I could swallow a hot dog or a big old piece of chocolate all that kind but I could not swallow a pill and I tried and it was embarrassing to go to the pharmacy or whatever and they'd say you know liquid form you know uh or can i chop this pill up no you can't chop this it's a time release you know whatever uh actually what i <laughs> figured out on my own was uh because i think what i did was i put the pill in my mouth and i take a gigantic fill my mouth with water or okay i'll be true for coke and uh keep swallowing the pill wouldn't you know the pill wouldn't go down the secret is take a little bit of liquid if you happen to have if you're a grown adult and you have that problem I've mentioned some things like such and such nobody ever I'm the only one you know like I called all my life my mother and father you know, Jim and Betty. I never said mom, mother, hey dad. It was always Jim or whatever. And I thought, who else does, you know, who else does that? I've never, I never had anybody leave a comment and say, eh, yeah, I, yeah, I did that or my sister did that or whatever. I might leave a comment below if you're somebody who can't swallow a pill. And if you tried, are you doing the thing that you know that I think I did was filling my mouth with water? No, just take a little amount. That was a bunch of pills right there. Seven at once. I usually take out the like the big, uh, big one or two, swallow the others, and then swallow the. Uh, and I think I actually took a potassium that time. Sixteen. Okay. Those go back in my. Demise. So what else are we talking about? Um, I think that's it. I don't feel comfortable. There's some YouTubers like uh, Boogie, whatever his number is, who's 
had problems uh, through his life or whatever, and he he does tell people, you know, make recommendations, and I don't feel comfortable telling people to seek psychiatric help or call a crisis line. I wouldn't know what crisis line to call. Was it Ted Bunk? Bunk? Who was the guy that killed so many women across the United States? And he was a uh, crisis counselor on a uh, phone service. And he worked, I think they worked, they had a little office, and he worked late at night with a woman or maybe a couple women on a crisis line. And he was giving out advice. And uh, finally he was executed in uh, Florida. He made a mistake. He should have ended up getting caught in some other state that didn't have the death penalty. I remember seeing something on TV about uh, about him, and I, th if I remember correct, he's the one that he, well, he did different ploys, different things, and he had I forget if he had a, a cast on his leg or a cast on his arm or something, and then he was out at the car, and he said, "Ma'am." Could you help me do what, what, you know, whatever it was? And she went over, and then, of course, he grabbed her and ended up killing. He killed a bunch of women. We could do a search, but we're not going to. You know how to do a Google search, right? Well, let me, just to see what's going on. Let's see, where is this? Here it is. We just drag it over here. Oh. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there with the UK. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Trump. Wow, what a, what, what a two years. Anybody know what sits down here? It says HQ Trivia and Vine co-founder dead at 34. I think, I don't know what HQ Trivia is. I think Vine, I think I belonged to it. I think it, it sounds familiar. Uh, co-founder Crow, Colin Crow, co-founder and CEO of the hit gaming app HQ Trivia, was found dead Sunday morning in New York. He was 34 years old. Police found... God damn, I hate these... Auto start, and I want. Of course, this is this is CNN. When I go to the CNN web, CNN website, I don't want to see video. Maybe I want to see video, but I want to go there and see the article, and then, and probably if I want to see video, I'll probably go to YouTube. Uh, police found Crow 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 in the bedroom of his New York apartment after Kroll's girlfriend called the New York Police Department asking for a welfare check, a law enforcement source told CNN. We learned today of the passing of our friend and founder, Colin Kroll, and it's with deep sadness that we say goodbye. Da, 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 da. He was unconscious and unresponsive and pronounced dead on the scene. Police notified the family. Medical examiner will determine the cause of death. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Crow, Crow became a big name in the tech world after co-founding Vine, the now defunct looping video platform that launched the careers of uh, many numerous media stars. And uh, I remember I uh, had an account there or whatever. Uh, Uh, it's over the top of that. Let's see. Anyway, well, 34 years of age. That's that's too soon. What was that about? 
Disney actor. Disney fires an actor after police say he tried to meet a 13-year-old for sex. A <laughs> Disney actor. He's been fired. I, I clicked on this last night, I think it was, or yesterday. He online met a 13-year-old boy, actually, the police, and made arrangements. He sent uh, four uh, explicit photos undoubtedly of uh, a part of your body you shouldn't be exposing to the boy or to the 13 year old the police and uh, made they made arrangements to meet and he went to meet I think it was in Las Vegas and uh, now he's going to be going to jail and he doesn't have a job and um, the show that he was on which I've never seen, uh, probably the Disney Channel. I don't get the Disney Channel. Uh, which I, th I think the story said was about a 13-year-old girl. And uh, anyway, they, Disney said that uh, he was fired and that the last season or the last show of the season or something had been produced or released or whatever, and I got a feeling that uh, that's going to be the end of that show. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I got to put these, and I need, I just a couple hours ago, whatever, I walked over to the, we live in an apartment complex here, small one. I walked over to the office, which is a very short distance, to take the mail, and then I came back, and I'm totally... I, I just made it back. Wasn't sure I could make it there and back. Life sucks. Let me t oh, let me tell you. If you're a young person, you know, watch your diet. I mean, watch what you, you know, here, you know. <laughs> watch your, watch your diet. Um, and exercise. Now, I, like I said, I worked my. I've never with. I was never without a job. Uh, I worked three summers. I think well, two summers I worked for the United States Post Office at Christmas time. You know, as an extra employee. Eventually, I was hired by the post office, and worked for them for a few months until I told them to take this job and shove it, which they couldn't believe. They, they said, you know, this is a career civil service appointment. Uh, take your civil service, you know. Uh, I worked as a welder, a boilermaker. I built railroad cars. I built trucks. I built gigantic trucks. You know, the trucks you see in mining. The trucks you never see on the highway because they would fill up, you know, all four lanes of the, or more of the, the damned highways. Uh, and then, then I got married at age 26, and my wife had a tropical fish shop, and I had to end up, uh, I wanted to keep working as a welder, but, you know, Jim, if you loved me, you'd want to be here doing the business with me, and I uh, was a tropical fish shop for four years. Oh. End up eventually working hospital security for 30 years. I worked other jobs to part-time jobs. I was a manager trainee for a little while at a Radio Shack place. I told them to take this job and shove it to. Uh, why did I get on that subject? There was a reason. Oh, ex okay, so. The 30 years I'm working hospital security, just take that. You know, I was foot patrolling all the time or in a vehicle switching off and other people, you know. One hospital I worked at for five, six, altogether six years there. Every two hours we switched. Two hours I'd be walking through the hospital. Two hours I'd be in the emergency room. Two hours I'd be in the outside patrol vehicle too, you know walking, doing all that kind of stuff. 
but that's not, I should have been out, well, I shouldn't have been out running because I know I worked with guys who out running and they were disabled because of bad, you know, problem, you know, but, oh, hell, I, uh, I thought masturbating every day would take care of cardiovascular, you know, act, you know, it doesn't. You don't need to do a study. Well, you can use me as a study. Uh, masturbating every day does not raise up your cardiovascular system to be good enough for, for I wouldn't be a overweight uh, type 2 diabetic. So if you're a young person, you know, <clears throat> save 10% of your money at least. Put 10% of your money someplace and don't touch it. Use it for retirement and exercise and eat, you know, eat right. <clears throat> because it, <clears throat> it sucks to be, now I've been, actually I was lucky. <clears throat> Until about 65 years of age, I never really had any problems. <clears throat> and And fairly recently, like when I went to have the, a pacemaker put in a few years ago or whatever, you know, it was like when you go to the, okay, let's see, have you, uh, have you uh, had any operations? No. No operations? No. You've never had an op, well, I had my tonsils out when I, that doesn't count. Oh, okay, well, now, you know, I go, yeah, I was a, uh, had a pacemaker put in, you know, I had, uh, you know, this or that done, yeah. So, it's no, uh, and I did, you know. Well, I never did the, I did once, I think I did the uh, health plan, you know, but it wasn't one of those gyms or whatever, it was where I worked. They had a pay X amount of money, and you could go upstairs on the, fifth or sixth floor and use their exercise equipment or something. I don't think I ever signed up for a, but I took a bicycle ride. Well, that was a bicycle patrol officer at the hospital. And uh, I never actually rode the MS multiple sclerosis 150 or whatever. When it first came out, the next year that it, it came around, I went out and bought a bicycle, and then I went out practicing riding, and my nose was running all the time, and I just it was just her terrible, and so I didn't ride the MS-150. Thought I had a cold. Next uh, year, when it time rolls around, I put my bike out, started the same thing, went to the doctor, and I said, I've got, and he says, Hay fever, you're allergic to ragweed or whatever. So, but really I was in good health, but, and maybe you're in good health, but stay in good health and do some kind of exercise, do something and don't get, here I am. Of course, if I wasn't, if I didn't have an enlarged prostate where I run to the restroom every 15 minutes or 30 minutes or it varies. Uh, and I don't know how you exercise your prostate. Masturbation daily does not, apparently. <laughs> uh, prevent a, a enlarged prostate. Maybe it causes it, I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Oh, hum.